Well, Rusty suggested we do this. And this show, in a building where some of us draw on Wednesday night, is a creation of some of the people that I know and all these people, as you can see, in common, they have these paintings they did of all people, me. And the reason they did me is for some reason they find me fascinating. And I don't consider myself a very good model because I'm constantly talking and yet that doesn't bother them a bit. Basically it's hinging around four personalities, two men and two women, all four of which really have a great deal of talent. There are other images in the show that you can see are very good by other friends that I had. Some of them I saved and some of them which are, you know, uh, maybe caricatures of me, a few. But normally these are done by the two men, Dan Stepp and Mike Kemp. Mike Kemp I've known since 72. I had him in a class when I taught at the University of Florida. Then later I went to another college in the same town. I pointed my bike the other way and went west to Santa Fe Community College. So what we'll do is, what you'll, Rusty will do with his camera is follow me around and I'll first of all explain the fact that these people, oh, that I, I, I'll go back to the four, the two men I've said. Uh, one of them is Dan Stepp, a very talented uh, artist that has chose to live here and comes from around here. And then the other is Mike Kemp. And Mike Kemp, as I just mentioned, was one that he and I were in a class together many, many years ago. In fact, he said one time in the class, uh, Joseph Cornell, the painter, uh, I mean, the uh, box maker actually, had just died and I was friendly with, the, with him. And so I told the class, I don't remember this at all, but I told the class, today I just really feel low as can be because Joe Cornell passed away. His sister just called me and told me the news. It was in a December, on a December day. That, that was very shocking. And, and Mike Kemp, who I'll show you his things very soon, his pieces in the show, he said that at that time I sat for the class and he did this charcoal drawing, but he claimed it was pretty good drawing. And of course he couldn't find it for the show. He could, couldn't find a period, but he did do that. I thought that was intriguing. But I've always it feel, felt good about people drawing me. And I, now that I'm at the age I am, I'm really kind of shocked that they would still find a fascination. Perhaps it's my bulbous nose and my bigger than big mouth that do that. Because in a way I am a caricature of myself. And, uh, We'll now get up and I'm going to show you, first I'm going to show you a poster that was done from a photograph and behind it is a plate that I've been doing, those plates, and it's also used in other paintings in, in the show. But the show was a one night stand because the reason it was in a one night stand was because they kind of suggested it, it wasn't my doings but I was thrilled that they would want to do this. So we got these drawings and paintings together and that's, and even a sculpture. The sculpture, we'll, we'll go to the sculpture in a minute because it would look like an ego thing if we started with the, but I think a Buster's uh, uh, Connor uh, piece out here. And it's, of course with your camera, it, it is a very charming, uh, kind of rendering from a photograph of me and one of my plates by, by this wonderful artist because Buster O'Connor is a very good commercial artist and a great friend and he did this but it's kind of a nice one to start with. Now here the next thing I'm going to show you are two of the four people that I said. This piece is by, you know, I'll pose with it, see by Dan Stepp, who has done about six paintings of me. 
And the paintings he's done of me have, as we can see, is the antithesis of the kind of joy that that photograph relates to. And so he's one of the fellows that did it. I'm not going to go to every painting on drawing, but these are two of my friends that are very good friends, Ron Chesser, and this is Charlie Williams, a local doctor that loves to draw with us when we do draw here in this building. Ron, I've known since 1968, a great, great friend, and uh, uh, certainly someone that uh, enjoys drawing. This is done by Anne Gilroy, and Anne Gilroy, I think her paintings were just really intriguing that she could take the time, and we're focusing on these paintings because of the correlation between myself and those people that did the paintings. These two are very early paintings, 1949 or 50, and they're by me, but I just put them in because they're just some things I thought that the self-portrait things is important because we all know that all the artists in history, including Rembrandt and uh, other painters, did in some cases paint themselves a great deal. Now that painting is by Mike Kemp, the third of the four people. Now there's Howard, uh, minute, by okay. the now. third painter of the four painters that have the paintings I, that Howard. they were very serious about using me as a model. This was done by Mike Kemp. Now that's a Matisse uh, thing in the background that he, uh, that, you know, just a symbol of the Matisse painting because I just love Matisse myself. So now we'll go in here. Would you like to do that, Rusty? All right. You want me to follow me? Wow, and you guys can look around in the foyer or whatever you want to call it. Now, this is another painting that, as I say, Ann Gilroy did. And the, the whole idea of doing the movie is that when you see this and then you see me, you can see how she felt about using me as a model. And so this would be the third person of the four people, two guys and two women. So I just thought she did so well. And she kept saying, oh, I'd love to paint you. Oh, I'd love to. Don't fall on the chair back there. So that was one of hers. This is the other one that I thought she did. I'll just stand there, too, <laughs> you know, to show you the, the material. And this is the other one that she did that uh, of about four to six paintings she's done of me. And uh, that one, I thought. You can see that's the plate. I do plates and paint them with a guy named John Tilton. For 25 years I've done those plates, and those plates are done. And uh, so they both. there was one hanging here, and that's the reason those are there. I'd like to draw attention also, if you could get a good shot of this one. That was sent to me recently, and, and Hector, my friend, framed it. And uh, that one, and then this one here, and she done it years ago. And this was a with uh, uh, Mike Kemp. It was a wonderful class. Lenny in a recent appearance, as she called it, and her name is Nancy Reese, a great friend and somebody that I admire immensely. And so, recently, I guess she found this other one that you just photographed. And that was the one that she sent me as a gift. And I was thrilled to get it. Now going into the series of the four personalities that did me, that, you know, that, that's the idea, the tie-in to see, seeing my features, having me talk a little, being my friend and suggesting that we come up here. Now that was done by Dan Stepp. I thought that really looked a lot like me. It also made me realize how the line from here down there for the chin kind of changes with time. You got the two that Ann did there, and then you found another one. But I think there's, yeah, there's another one right here. And this was done by the fourth person, who is immensely gifted a uh, painter that lives here with her husband. And her name is Melanie Peter, like St. Peter. And she is just a remarkable artist. And that is really a very, very good likeness, I think. 
and she has done a number of things. Some of the other ones, as we go through these, you'll see, she, uh, I was so thrilled she did that to kind of use me as an excuse to kind of try to get into my personality by me just sitting for them. And this is another one of Ann Gilroy's. But those two that I just stood before, I just wanted you to see those because I thought they were very, very good likeness. And that, you see, is obviously when I was uh, not as, uh, you might say, perky, I guess that's a good word, as I was in Melanie's. And then this was done by my friend that just did a, uh, a movie, 51 minute movie on me. In fact, I got some the other day in the mail. And this one is done by my great friend who I met 40 years ago up in Alaska. And his name is Galen Garwood. And the movie that he made called Cadmium Red Light. Why he, but see, he, I think he's always thought of me, the kind of the way I think of myself, like a tragic hero, you know. And so in this one, I mean, it's obviously a caricature, a great word to pronounce. This is, I think, a very good painting that was done by Mike Kemp. We'll get to this one before. But that one with the plate in the background was done at the sittings that I, as you can see, sat there with a tie and a shirt on. I even brought different colored shirts. And then that was one that when I sat for them in the most recent months, Mike Kemp did. I thought that was very good. Uh, and my friend uh, Ch Ch Ron Chesser, he thought that was even better than the, the work that the girls did, the two girls, Melanie Peter and Anne Gilroy. But now this painting was done by Melanie Peter, and that was a little more ambitious, the size of the canvas and everything, and me holding a bottle like I did. And I just love the way at the bottom of the painting, she left canvas coming through. And her husband, her husband thought, his name's Bob, and he thought that that was the best painting she ever did. It showed recently down at the Appleton Gallery, which is down in Ocala. So now that is why I wanted to come into this room. You could turn it to see that over there I dug up some things that I had uh, done, like this is self-portrait, you know, that I had done collage called, uh, uh, I call it a motorman collage, and that's me kind of like, <laughs> it kind of looks like just a little collage. I love to do collages of myself. So I brought these four up for that. Here I am with my uh, menagerie, or whatever you would call it, a bird, camel and a cat shaking its paw at Papa. And then this one was one, and I, I forget what that means in French, but I know that petite a petite means, you see, whatever that meant. And then that's just a caricature. So in this room, oh, and over here, and you'd have to get here, and I'll show you why. Stand over there, Rusty. And here's the eye, you see and the nose, these are the ears, the mouth, it looks just exactly like my mouth, don't you agree? <laughs> oh yeah. See, and I wanted to do like a cubist take, so rather than have my head go concave, I had it go, just to use the word of the movie, convex. And then that's what this one consists of. So, uh, and I am into steel, but that, that's another thing. So let's track, track the things here and then we'll go down the hall and you'll have your whole package. And I think I'm timing it so it'll be about 23 minutes. Now that painting was done by me, like a self in about 1950. And I just would do myself every conceivable way. And I did a, quite a number of paintings in oil and so forth. That little one, which I think looks very much like me, you know, is by Melanie Peter. This was her room, so we kind of took this room over because she's leaving soon to work in a studio that she and Bob, her husband, built. Now those over there... Let's start it again. 
Okay. I thought that, see, that's why it's good you made this movie. Not because of me, I mean narrating it, because I think that these people really put their heart, especially the four stars of the show, you might say, and that, of course, is one of them, Dan Stepp, and then that's another one by Melanie Peter. She's a very, very rich artist, and I'm flattered that these people would want to paint me, and that's why I suggested doing that. Now, that's a painting, uh, uh, that's a drawing, pardon me, that I did for my daughter Charlotte, and she, you know, is my uh, now 19-year-old daughter, and I just love to do self-portraits, but I don't look at myself so much, and I gave her that one. She is in the show, and also her mother, Nancy Kessel, is in the show. This was done by a, a, a very, in this town, he was the top painter till his death a year or so ago, and his name was Hiram Williams. Lynn, he always called me Lynn, beset by thought. And he did at least 20 to 30 drawings of me, and he even, and, and paintings too. I would suggest between five and maybe eight paintings. One of them is six feet by six feet of my head. But he had the remarkable talent, Hiram Williams, of having total recall like Truman Capote had when he did the book In Cold Blood. But I really don't know many painters that have that a skill or talent. But Hiram was one of my influences as a personality and he uh, did all these drawings from only looking at me as he saw me in his imagination or whatever. And he was so good at doing that. I think that looks a lot like me. And like I say, I just listed the amount of work he did of me. Some of my friends got paintings, uh, drawings by him. And the big painting he gave to the school. And the reason he gave it to the school, he had, had to have his cesspool turned into a city kind of uh, uh, piping. And he took that thousand dollars at that time and had it switch from his cesspool system into the city water and so forth. A rather interesting story because his paintings went for, he charged the school a thousand dollars for talking. Never looked at me once, but he did this huge painting. And he always would charge for paintings that size in his lifetime, $10,000. And in that one, why? They got it for a thousand. These were two other drawings that I was so embarrassed by all the physical work that the wonderful friend Ann Gilroy did that I did that. And then when she was putting the show up, which took a lot of her energy for her, well, then I did that, which you can tell that is like a caricature. And now we'll go in the hall, the foyer, or whatever you want to call it. And here's another one of Anne that I thought was a very nice painting too. But all these paintings, you gonna leave? Why are you gonna leave? You gotta be somewhere. Yeah. Thanks so much for coming, That's Howard. Wonderful. If nobody knew well, this was happening, I would have added a piece. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, indeed. Bye bye, Howard. You're my man. Congratulations. Hi. Wonderful. <laughs> Congratulations. The quality of that, and he did that very quickly. Howard, I'll be in touch, babe. They're not taking it down before Wednesday, are they? I don't think so. Go ahead. Okay. I just wanted to go down the hall here and kill off. I know I, you tell me not, don't talk about everything, but we'll drift down the hall. I'll be in touch. All right, buddy. And the drawing. And he did that the other night in just a few minutes. I just thought that was so beautiful. Now, a uh, measure of it. Well, this, uh, oh, this, she took the picture of it. She, she, I think you want the picture first, don't you? Yeah. Well, yeah, I did that. Uh, and look, at I wrote there, let, let your boat of life be light, packed only with what you need, a homey home and simple pleasures. And of course, I have so many things in my house that there'd be no way the boat could be light. It would sink with all the stuff I got and we've collected. But this is her take. She's wonderful at photography and she sent that for the show. 
And that was done on my birthday in 05, a couple of years ago. But there, it's kind of neat that they have a correlation, the year and everything. And so there that is. Now we're going to drift down here and we're going to see. Now that was a picture that was taken for uh, an album I did of, of some LPs. I did three of them. That was done, and that was done by Doug Prince, a wonderful photographer. And of course, that's me with his kids, his two boys, looking at a, a horse that was there on the street where I live for many years in a little empty lot. Just that white horse. This was done by Melanie. This was done by you. Let me, yeah. let me, let me see, take a picture oh, yeah. of us. Yeah. See, he did this of me because <laughs> he's my buddy. And I thought he did a terrific job yeah. on this. I really did. I, I was flabbergasted, Bob, oh, and, nice. and delighted. And he yeah. framed that like that. Melanie Peter again. Melanie Peter did this. And this one was done, and I'll show you how much I've changed perhaps, by my friend Galen Garwood that has just done cadmium red light, a little plug there. And uh, he did that 40 years ago up in Alaska. He said, sit down. So in contrast with the run around the corner, which was a caricature, yeah. you can see how that one went. And then these are two by my daughter. I thought it was so great that she got that kind of, uh, you know, look when she when I wasn't looking, which is, of course, when you're getting painted or anything, you're thinking about that. And then I love the way she took, in connection with my steel involvement now, August of 06, she took that in my backyard where David Bell and I, my great friend David Bell, do uh, like John Tilton, I do it with clay, and, and this was done in the backyard to f her to find that particular uh, grouping of metal going vertically and stick me in there, and even the way it's lit. So I was very elated that she said this. This was done after I was married to her mother, and this was done by Nancy Kessel, and I was rather knocked out. Uh, Ann Gilroy found that frame and stuck the picture in there. But I was rather uh, flattered with my uh, friend uh, now, uh, my, uh, you know, the mother of, of Charlotte Kessel, Nancy Kessel, had done that when we were married, and now we're not, but we're great friends. And she wanted her picture in there. Here's one that I started by looking in the mirror in the bathroom down there. And uh, I just found it, and we just stuck it up. It's not done. And here's one by Harry Robinson, a great friend. And he did this one when I was vocalizing. And I think it rather captures my uh, intensity when I sing. So these, to, for a coda, this is the coda. These were done. Friend here was Ellie Blair. and. Bob, who I just had my picture taken with uh, when we were with his piece, why Ellie Blair did these many, many years ago when I was uh, singing. I don't know how who did this, but there's another great drawing. I think you'll agree, Bob, yeah. uh, by Ellie Blair. I don't know who did that, but that's also a very nice one. It's not signed. And then, like I say, shuffling off the stage where you have these other drawings and I don't even know. Uh, this was done by Ann Gilroy's daughter, Angela. And I thought that her talent just flowed through that drawing. And then this was done by Blake, my great friend that has been, you know, and then that was done, good one to end on, by Ron Chester, Wednesday Night Lenny. And uh, that is the show. And uh, you want me to say anything at the end, I would say that I was so elated and flattered that the people that, you know, took this into account, like for instance, Ann Gilroy, to put it up and everything, I was really tickled by this, m even more perhaps than a little birthday party that, uh, you know, yeah. Dave Roberts gave me. I just was uh, much more than I thought I would be. 
uh, elated to know that my friends would uh, put this up. And it was a one night stand. So it's great you could sop it up with your camera on tape like this and have it the movie of the show that was given me by my Tinch buddy, Tinch building buddies. Amen. This is a coda. This was brought in at the last moment when it came up the night of the show. It was hanging on the wall and it was done by Duff, the boyfriend of my daughter Diane. And he just did that and as soon as Hector, the collector, saw that, he said, give me his phone number because he wanted to buy that. But I thought he really got something to me of myself, an old man shuffling off the stage with his muse. And I just, I really, I really uh, was tickled by that. I don't think he knew how tickled I was. And uh, so let's hope that uh, in, we all see this movie in time to come that will close out with Duff's image of his girlfriend's father. <laughs>